Well, hello there, and welcome back to my happy place, aka my sewing room. Today is Friday, May 28th, 2021, and this is episode number 19 in my Sew Your Stash series, and it's also uh, number 33 in the Socialites uh, quilt along because number 33 is the Inspire block, and that one is designed by me. So I'm gonna be showing you how to sew this. So I know that I told you about the Socialites quilt along uh, quite a while ago. I showed you my Genuine block, and that's block 15 in this sew along that is hosted by Fat Quarter Shop. And I did a tutorial on my Genuine block on episode 11 um, in my Sew Your Stash series. Let me grab, I think that's sitting under here. Yeah, that's the Genuine block. So I did that in, again, episode 11 in the Sew Your Stash series, and that's the Genuine block, and this is nine inch blocks. And so now it's my turn today for um, block 33, which is the Inspire block. Now, you can do three inch or six inch or nine inch. I'm just choosing to do nine inch. And so I will leave the link in the description below my video here where you can download this PDF of this block and so you can decide which size you want to do it in. But I'm gonna do it in the nine inch. And so I have um, quite a few more blocks sewn in the Socialites, the one I showed you last time. So I think I'll just go through them real quickly and show you. So of course, this is today's that I'll be showing you. Um, if you didn't watch my other episode about my blocks, I'll just let you know that I'm using my B backgrounds, a variety of those, and then I'm using my prim fabrics for my blocks. And so I'm just gonna kind of flip through here uncover them one by one so you can see. I don't know, I don't like how you can see other blocks through them, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it like that. And I'll put them on the design board. Okay, can you see the whole block that way? Mm -hmm. All right. So some of these maybe you have already seen in a past video, but some of these may be new. So I'll just show them again. Here I am picking off threads again. So for these, I chose to look at the blocks in a different way and do many prints in each block because, you know, I like to sew scrappy. And when I say scrappy, you know, I, I like to use several colors, but I decided to use my prim collection and I have plenty of colors in my prim collection. And so I just decided to stay within that I don't think I'm going to be doing all 36 blocks. There are 18 designers and we um, we each have designed two blocks. And so today is my second one. So that makes a total obviously of 36 blocks, but I think I'm gonna make, I don't know, 25 or something like that. I'm almost there, 25, 30, and just make a lap quilt. And I think that would be really fun. I love sampler quilts, and so I always look for an opportunity to sew up a new sampler quilt. These blocks are really fun. So what I did for this is I just put a fat quarter bundle of my prim fabrics in um, one of my baskets that I get from Target, the same one that I use for my you know scrappy strips, and. Uh, then I just work out of that. I keep my binder in there. Here, let me show you that binder. Here's the social lights binder that you can get from Fat Quarter Shop. And I keep all of my um, downloaded blocks in there. And then I just keep the binder in the basket and keep all my blocks there between two design boards. And what I mean by two design boards is I'll take this one and then I'll take the other one and have all of my blocks here. And when I travel or put things away so that they're not, you know, getting ruined when I get next to them is I will sandwich it with the design board on top and then put rubber bands, great big rubber bands that I get from the container store around them. And that's how I keep my blocks nice and safely. 
um, wrinkle free and all that stuff while I'm traveling or even in my sewing room. And what's fun about that is I can even store the blocks sideways like this, kind of on the bookcase. And that doesn't take up a lot of room. I can take them in my trailer and they're just always protected. These blocks are so fun to make and I especially love just taking fabric and playing with the different colors and doing different combinations. Okay, I've got one more. I didn't even count how many that was, but I think, I think it's 20 that I have completed so far. All right, so those are my social lights blocks. And again, I will link to this individual pattern here for you. And then I will also link to um, Fat Quarter Shop's blog, which is the Jolly Jabber. I'll link to their blog post that tells all about the social lights blogs, how you can get the downloads for all of them. Um, it started last September and it goes until July, I believe. And so obviously it's never too late to join along. They're free, completely free downloads and um, it's just really fun. They have a setting idea there on their blog that you can see and you know a lot of the designers are doing different settings and it's kind of fun. So anyway I'll leave that link and so let's set aside. Here let me put it over here because I'm going to talk about this blog here. Here I'll set that on top. So I wanted to do my block in my Sew Your Stash series because I obviously use my scrap baskets. So I am work worked out of my three and a half inch baskets here that I've showed you a lot of times. Again, there's a link to that on my first introduction to the series here. And um, I really think that these, I kind of wanted them to look like toy sewing machines. I have designed so many sewing machine blocks throughout my uh, quilting career, and I probably, you know, will be designing many more. But this one I really wanted very simplified because I wanted it to end up looking like a toy sewing machine. So if you're like me and you've sewn your whole life, uh, chances are you've probably had a toy sewing machine. And me and my sisters had several and we played with them all the time, and I love, love collecting them. So I'll show you one of my toy sewing machines that you saw in the introductory video. I'll talk about that in a minute. But first I wanna just show you the blocks that I've made so far. And um, they're all nine inch size. And typically I'll take like um, a two-tone, like a lighter color here and a darker here and then just a different square for the spool of thread. This just takes a two inch square and then all of this I can cut out of my three and a half inch scrappy strips baskets. And then for the backgrounds, I grabbed uh, one of my B backgrounds, 10 inch stackers because I can get one background for one block out of one 10 inch stacker and have a little bit left over. So that's kind of fun if you wanna do them real scrappy. So here's, here's a green one, and I just love how these all look like toy sewing machines. Now I was on a sew day for the last couple of days, and I cut these out, and my friend Betty sewed these up for me. And so we, we, were, we were a team. I cut and she sewed, and I just think they turn out really cute. So thank you, Betty for sewing these up so I could show you guys today. Now this one I kind of did a little bit different, meaning I have darker machine with the lighter trim. I just want to get all colors in here. And I'm not finished, this is just, I have 12, 13, 14, something like that block sewn up so far and I'll be sewing more. This one I decided to do 
different color for the sewing machine and the base. It's fun to use a print that has a lot of different colors in, and then you can pull from those colors to kind of make the accent colors. Now I had to include this color because this reminds me of the sewing machine that I learned to sew on, which is my mom's, the sewing machine that she still uses. It's a Singer, and it's kind of these colors right here. So I included that, and I also have a toy sewing machine that's a replica of that, and it's these colors. There's another pink one. Here's another teal one. Let's see, where's that one where? See what I mean where that one, I just kind of did opposite. Can you see both of those mm -hmm. in the screen, sis? Yep. So yeah, dark and light, and then light and dark, just in opposite places. Okay, then of course, denim, red, white, and blue. And you know I had to do a red gingham. And then another one with that example of a print with several colors, and then you can just kind of pull out those colors. So those are the ones that I have sewn so far, or should I say, Betty has sewn <laughs> so far for me. And this is what I have cut. So I don't need to tell you the cutting instructions because they're on the PDF. So what I did here is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to do one color for the machine and a red for the trim. And then this is for the spool of thread. And um, so I'll go over to the, the sewing machine in a minute and we'll sew that up. But I just wanted to talk about my vintage toys. I know that if you follow me, you know that I love vintage toys and I love kitchen things. Um, to use in my sewing room. And so this happens to be one of my toy sewing machines. I've collected them for a lot of years. I think I probably have 20 or 25 in my collection and they're downstairs displayed. I'll probably show you those at one point, but I kind of wanted to show you this one that's kind of fun. So what this one does, this runs on batteries. And I don't, I, my batteries haven't used this for a while, but let's see. Okay, I've got my vintage spool of thread in here. But what you do is you put that down. Whoops. You put that down so this becomes your base for your sewing machine. And then you have to take this off. This is the little spool of thread holder. And you screw that in because if you, you know, you can't fold it down under there. And then you put your thread on there and here's a little pocket you know, for vintage um, things, you know, vintage needles for your sewing machine. And here's the little pedal. It takes several D batteries and I don't keep the batteries in here because I don't want them to corrode. And I checked this morning and I haven't got any D batteries so I can't show you, but this is the little pedal that you push and then it sews. But isn't that adorable? That's so cute. I don't know you're looking at it from the top down. So let me, let me hold it this way. You see it? That's so cute. I love that little red sewing machine and that's just the perfect red color, right? So I have um, several different kinds and colors in my collection and I, I try to find the ones that are in really good shape. I find them in antique shops, thrift shops. I've even, you know, bought some over the years, a lot of years ago at garage sales for a couple of dollars or something like that. But I, it's hard for me to pass up a good little toy sewing machine. They're so fun. And so I just thought I would bring an example. I also collect toy irons. This one actually plugs in and works. But again, it doesn't have a heat setting like I've shown you in my, my video where I explain my vintage irons. So I don't really use this one. I just use this for looks because if I did plug this in and use it, it would scorch everything that I have. And then this is something that you see in my videos all the time, but this is another toy that I like to use. I have a few of these and this is just a little toy mixer. And then I put one of my, this is my farm girl vintage pinball that we used to 
um, Habit Riley Blake designs and then my pins are in here. But I just took out the little mixing bowl or this one may not even have had its mixing bowl. It may have been missing, which was fine because I just put my magnetic pin bowl there. And this is metal, so the magnetic pin bowl just sits right there. But um, some of the other ones that I have have their bowl with them and I you know keep like little spools of vintage thread in there or my little scissors or anything like that and that's really fun so I just thought I'd show you a few of my toys like that I even have oh, I should have grabbed that but I have a cute little blender a toy blender that I keep my little buttons in there and then you push the button and the buttons whirl around and that's really fun all right I guess that's enough talk about little little girl vintage toys in my sewing room and let's go over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how I put this simple block together. Okay here I am and um, I'm going to be sewing with Miss Doris today but I did want to show you that I was able to get my sewing mat quilted. Here I'll just tip this up so you can see. See this is the perfect size and um, this is 10 inches deep by 18 long and it's the perfect size for my little table, but it's the perfect size for a featherweight. So I really like that. My other one was a little bit um, deeper and that was nice, but I always had problems, you know, running my truck back and forth and I, you know, I can't have problems with that. Here's another toy that I like to use in my sewing room. So, and then I liked this just to be a table area because one of the things that I like to do on my sewing table here is if I need to use this cutting board, then I will just move these and slide this right over to the edge, move my cutting board here, and then I can work at it here. So that's why I did this size. It also doubles as a doll quilt. Now remember, I showed this tutorial to you, and so I'm calling it a sewing mat, you know, slash doll quilt in my Sew Your Stash series, episode 15, where I did my quick broken dishes block. I did two inch and four inch blocks out of my scraps and this is ends up being a two inch block and you use one one half inch squares from your leftovers. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my machine, but I'm gonna turn that light off so it doesn't glare strangely and we're gonna start sewing. So here I've got the pattern here and I usually have a block that I can look at and um, the first thing I like to do when I start sewing is look at what has easy corner triangles. So I know that this piece right here has three easy corner triangles on it, and then this piece right here has one in the corner. So I'm gonna do those first, and then it's just a matter of starting to sew the sections together. So after I do all of the easy corner triangles, then I sew this to that, and this to that, and then I can sew those three together and then I can start to build my block by this section sewing to that and then doing this section sewing to that and then I add my bottom piece last. And so with easy corner triangles I always use my seam sew easy guide and this is the center line that I use so that I do not have to mark a line from corner to corner on my fabric and then this is my quarter inch seam allowance that I use and I think in a couple videos again um, I said that I would do a project to show you what I use this line for which is the other side of the quarter inch seam so I do have a fun little block that I'm going to show you you know how I use that and so that'll be sometime next month and so stay tuned for that so let's just get started with doing the easy corner triangles and all I do is put them right sides to right sides, line up all those corners, and I start right there in the corner, and then I follow this corner right along this center line. I just make sure this center line is lined up with my needle, and then I know that I'm going to be sewing from corner to corner very easily without any marking by doing that. And then I'll just pull this one over and put that there, put that there, and if you know, if I'm worried about them falling off, I don't, you know, I really don't normally pin that way, but this bigger one, maybe I'll pin it and then just start doing the sewing one. And then I just look at the pattern so I know which direction that I'm going to do that 
curve. When I say curve, it kind of ends up looking like a curve, but um, you know, which direction I'm going to sew from point to point. And again, I'm using these little scraps just in between for the tutorial, but normally when I'm sewing here on my machine, I'm actually using my pieces from here down here and sewing squares together or triangles or things like that and making bonus quilts. But just for the sake of this tutorial, I like to just have scraps of fabric so that I don't have to worry about my bonus quilts. I don't want to get sidetracked and, you know, start talking about that. So, <laughs> and then um, instead of putting a scrap of fabric through before I stitch this, I might just grab this because I know I have to sew those together, so why not? And then here's where the quarter inch seam allowance. Now, I know a lot of um, you like to use a quarter inch foot, and that's great, but a lot of people have asked me why I don't use a quarter inch foot, and I just have never, they just don't work well for me because I like to have my quarter inch lined up already before it gets to the foot, if that makes sense. Meaning, I don't wanna just have my fabric sitting here and then, you know, I like to have it flat already following this line, especially if I have longer strips. It helps to keep things accurate and things not to get twisted here. Because as you know, if you just twist it a little teeny bit when you're putting it under the machine, that makes your quarter inch seam off. I don't use a scant quarter inch seam. I use an exact quarter inch seam and I just use this line. All right. Okay, I think I'm just gonna continue sewing, but I do wanna show you what I do with this. Maybe I better show you on this piece. Well, I'll sew this one, then I can show you how I press it. Okay, so I've got that. Let's run this one through. Okay, I'll just put my scrap of fabric there. And then I'll just cut these apart. And what I do with my easy corner triangles is I just grab scissors and you can see that that's all lined up. You can always tell when you did a great, good job when you can't see the background fabric showing through to the other side so you know it's all lined up. And I just trim an approximate quarter inch seam. It can be a little bit smaller, it can be a little bit bigger. It really doesn't matter because it's already sewn and you don't have to worry about those biases stretching out because you've already pressed it. Now these are tiny little pieces, so I will set those aside and then I'm just gonna go ahead and press these towards the triangle. I'm doing a nine inch block here and so I don't feel the need to press my seams open on this, but definitely if I was doing the the three inch block and maybe even the six inch, I might press my seams open just to make sure that you know, I was getting less bulk and have accurate blocks. But what I'm doing with this is just pressing towards the triangles. And then I'll take a clapper and just, you know, maybe I'll use two. I don't think my iron was heated up quite enough. I think I moved the dial. I took this to sew day yesterday and I probably moved the dial, the setting to what I normally had it on as I was transporting it. I like a good hot iron, and so that's why I use vintage. Again, I still get lots of questions about that, but I do have a tutorial here on how to shop for irons, and where I find them, and what to look for. Okay, let's see if that iron got hotter. It did, so it's gonna lay flatter. All right, I'm just gonna let that cool down for a minute and be flat, and I'm just gonna continue sewing over here.
Okay, so I have a few pieces sewn together. Now I'm just going to continuing on, continue on. After I press, I always bring them back over to the design board, lay them out so I know exactly the pieces are going where they need to go, so I'm not going to make any sewing mistakes. So I know that I can sew these two together now because they have become the same length, the same size. I can sew that to that, and I can sew that to that, and then I can sew that to that. And then I'll have one piece, two piece, three piece, and four piece. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'll show you at the end the back of my block in case you miss, because this is in, you know, kind of a sped up motion on which way I am pressing my seams. So I will show you that at the end. So let's get sewing. There we have my cute little toy sewing machine block. Now it should measure nine and a half inches right now, and then it'll measure nine inches when it's finished into your quilt or your pillow or whatever you want to do. And this block would be really fun to make a whole quilt out of, or you know, maybe look how fun it would be to make into like a sewing machine cover for your featherweight or something like that. But I think it would be really fun. And I think Sophie, my granddaughter, might even like a quilt with all these toy sewing machines. And let me show you the back, like I promised I would show you, so that you can see. Oh, I need to press that a little bit. It kind of got wrinkly, but that's how I did my pressing. But I love how these blocks look together. I think I'll put these all these blocks back up on my design wall and then um, see if Cass will take a little video of them so you can kind of see how they all look together. Um, how they might look just sewn together, but you can always, again, put sashings between them, cornerstones. You can get a nine inch uh, block and do alternate blocks like a patchwork block, which would be really fun. So all kinds of possibilities. This is a very, very simple sewing machine block with very few pieces, easy to put together. And I hope you enjoyed it, and I will chat with you later.